Hi, and my name is Curtis Brown. I work at Texas Instruments, and this is our first Smart Space video for the geometry section. And I'm here with John Urschel, uh, a current um, math student at MIT. He's pursuing his doctorate there, and super excited to be doing these videos with you, John. I know this video, we're gonna be talking about rigid transformations. So, uh, John, go ahead and take it away. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. This is the first in what will be five videos where we're going to talk about sort of shapes, congruence, similarity, and how these things, which are sort of very geometric and sort of at the surface, how these things can actually be somewhat algebraic. And so I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. And let me start by sharing my screen. So the topic of these five sessions is going to be congruence and similarity. And to start, what we're going to look at is the concept of a rigid transformation. So this is, at first, a seemingly abstract idea. But we're just going to look at the definition of what's a rigid transformation, go through a lot of examples so it becomes just more and more intuitive. And then we'll sort of start to talk about different types of rigid transformations and properties that they, that they have. So far, so good, everything. Awesome. Okay, let's keep going. So the first question is, what is a rigid transformation? So at its core, a rigid transformation is any sort of function that preserves length. And so I understand that this is at first somewhat abstract, but if you look at this little triangle we have, you can imagine that there's a function that takes this triangle, and in this example, it just rotates it. This is an example of a rigid transformation, just rotating this triangle, because you'll note that the distance between all the different endpoints of the triangle are still the same. This preserves length. And you can sort of see this geometrically pretty easily. Here I'm going to switch to an overhead I have. Suppose I just draw a triangle here. This will be our triangle. I think it's looks pretty nice. It's a nice yeah. looking triangle. That's a great looking triangle. I'm just gonna sketch over the X and Y axis to help illustrate this for you guys. So, so I think that's a really important thing that you're doing there, John, because um, I think when we see you move that, we're gonna see that that entire plane of points is actually transformed. So when we talk about a function or a transformation, it's not just acting on that single set of points or that single figure, right? It's on the entire plane, right? So we're going to see that whole plane of points be, uh, be transformed. Yeah, so for instance, you know, one thing we could do, just like this sort of visual example that we showed on the PowerPoint, is we could just rotate points. Okay. And this is something that preserves length, but you can see how it changes the sort of x and y axis. Or instead of rotation, you could just shift points up. And you can see Some how sort of all a translation. points yeah. shift. Not just the triangle I drew, but sort of everything. And so, yeah, so everything was translated two and one. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So this is uh, shifting all the points in the plane up to and one over. Right. And we're going to really dig into this sort of more and more. But I just wanted to give you a brief sort of visual idea of you know what you should think of as a rigid transformation now one thing that we talked about or you you mentioned is that it, it preserves distance so i'm thinking that we probably need to talk a little bit about like how we even manage distance right so what it what is distance and how do we even measure it yeah absolutely so if i go back to our powerpoint i just want to refresh you guys on just how we measure distance and remind you guys of the distance formula. So suppose you have two points, U and V, in the plane. The distance between them is given by the sum of squares of the first component, the difference in first component, plus the difference in second component, and you take the square root. So for instance, in this picture we have here, we're looking at the distance between the point negative one, negative one, and the distance between the point two, three. 
And so the way that you measure distance here is you just take two minus negative one. This is three. We square this. This is nine. Now we add the difference in the y component, which is three minus negative one. So this is four squared, this is 16, and nine plus 16 equals 10, 25. We take the square root and we see that the distance between these two points is five. It's an awful lot like a, a right triangle in there and I'm seeing some hints of Pythagorean theorem. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of Pythagorean theorem here because if you look at this triangle here, here, actually, let me just go to the overhead briefly. If you look at the triangle that we're drawing here, negative one, negative one. Negative one, negative one, and positive two, three. Uh, two, three. Mm -hmm. You'll notice if we build a little triangle. Wait a minute, that's three units to the right. Mm -hmm. Bottom length is three, right? So this length here is three, uh -huh. three units. This length here is four units. And I'm pretty so, sure all of our students should know that one as three, four, five, right? Yeah, so this, because this is a right angle, this is a three, four, five. Now, when you're trying to take the distance between two points, it's not always going to uh, go out to sort of nice values like that, but I just wanted to remind you of the distance formula and specifically for the example I just showed, you can see that there is a connection to the Pythagorean theorem and it's sort of pretty clear there, but that's something we'll touch on later. But I just wanted to remind you guys what distance is, just to give you a little bit of a refresher. And so we can think about these rigid transformations algebraically in some sense. The idea is that a rigid transformation is just a function, just like I took sort of, I took a triangle on the overhead with an X and Y axis and I shifted the whole plane or I rotated the whole plane somewhere else. A rigid transformation is just a function that sends each point in the coordinate plane X, Y to some other point. And so, one example, which we've already looked at a little bit, is rigid transformations that just shift things. So for instance, if you look at the picture on the right, one rigid transformation might just be the one that shifts things up three units and two units to the left. And so algebraically, this would be represented by T of X, Y equals X minus two, Y plus three. And if you look at what we've drawn in our uh, Cartesian plane here, we start with this triangle, and you can see that each of these three points has been shifted three units up and two units to the left. So this is a rigid transformation, and the key thing to keep in mind that we'll keep talking about through these sessions is you can think about rigid transformations as some sort of geometric operation, but you can also think about them algebraically in terms of some sort of function and equation, okay? Yeah, I think that, I mean, that looks like, that looks very much like uh, some sort of a function or a transformation, like I'm gonna apply the same thing um, to all the different points that I input, right? So when we think about functions, we think about that I have a, a, um, a single input or an input that I'm putting into that function and I get a single output, right? Mm -hmm. And that function does something to the number that I input, right? So yeah. we're doing the same thing here, only we're acting on both X and Y, right? So yeah. we give it both a, an, an X input and a Y input. And in this case, we're taking two away from the X value, so we're translating to the left, and we're adding three to the Y value, so that's why we're going three units up. So I can kind of see, I can see what you're talking about there. I like that. Yeah. And now it's quiz time. For, for you, Curtis. So, oh, man. Yeah, so, so far, <laughs> all right, we're thinking about a rigid transformation. We're thinking about it as a function. What property does a rigid transformation have to have? It's not just any transformation. It's not just any function. Like, what does it need to satisfy? What does it need well, to preserve? You, you told me earlier that uh, a, a rigid transformation is only a rigid transformation if 
it uh, if it preserves length, right? Very you good. Have the same distance between the points, mm -hmm. uh, every single set of points on the plane that we had before we did the transformation. Right. So a rigid transformation is not just any sort of transformation t, but it's one where the distance between two points u and v and the distance between the points they get transformed to is the same for any two points in the plane. And so if you want to ask yourself, okay, I have some transformation. How do I know if it's a rigid transformation? One way to check algebraically is to just try to show that the distance between two transform points and the distance between the original points is the same, then you know that you have a rigid transformation. And on the flip side, and this is sort of a cool thing about math in general to sort of show something is true, you usually have to show it for all cases to show something's false. For instance, to just show that something's not a rigid transformation, you just have to pick two points and show that the distance between the two points and the distance between what they're transformed to is not the same. And that's enough to show that something's not a rigid transformation. So John, I'm gonna ask a really quick question and yeah, just yeah. clarify for, for everyone. The, the notation that you have there, T, T, U, and T, V, you're talking about the transformed point, right? Exactly, so you have a point. About where, where U moves to, that's what T, U is, and where V moves to, that's what T, U is. Or yeah, T, V is, is, rather. Yeah. Exactly. Um, we might also talk about that as like um, U prime and T and V prime, right? We yeah. Sometimes of indicate that in, in a different notation. We might say U prime and, and T and V prime. Right. Where U prime is just the action of the transformation T on some point U. Right. And right. I understand that right now this is a little abstract. So I think it's important that we sort of dig into, you know, in a specific example. Okay. Okay. So let's. So, why don't we just look at an example of a rigid transformation? So, why don't we look at this transformation that sends x to one minus x and y to y minus three? Is this thing a rigid transformation? And sort of how can we tell? And the main idea for checking if something's a rigid transformation, and what's nice about this is you can sort of check in multiple ways. You can check geometrically to make sure the distances are being preserved, or you can check the sort of distance equation algebraically, and both ways are perfectly reasonable. So for instance, let's start by trying to check geometrically. So this transformation really consists of two main steps. The first thing this transformation is doing is it's reflecting some point u across the y-axis to some u prime. Okay, this preserves distance because, okay, if we're dealing with the overhead, all we're doing is just flipping our transparent piece of paper over. This preserves distances. So, John, can you share that to me? Yeah, yeah. I can show you. So, for instance, let's start... with this triangle we had earlier. Okay. So if we think about this transformation, the first part, just reflecting it across the y-axis, just consists of flipping this piece of paper over. And now we see that this triangle is on the other side of the y-axis. Okay. I see just, all the distances see, appear to be the same still. Exactly. It looks like I still have the, that same lengths of the sides. I didn't see you stretch it or shrink it or anything. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's still the same sort of overhead transparency. So mm -hmm. I haven't done anything to the piece of paper. I haven't folded it. I haven't like ripped it apart. I haven't stretched it. So we know that yeah. all the distances are still the same. Yeah. And if now stretch the, that. I'll be really impressed. Hey, don't, don't count me out. Okay. So now the second step of this transformation is now just shifting all the points down by three and to the right by one. And we see that the final point we end up with, this matches the definition of this transformation T of X, Y. 
And so the second part of this, I can show on the overhead. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, so now we're gonna do... Um, now we're gonna do, right. we're gonna shift down by three and to the right by one. So I'm gonna okay. go, go down three units, one, two, three. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna go to the right by one. And what we just did is we applied this transformation T geometrically and we can see because I didn't have to do anything to my piece of paper. I didn't have to fold it. I didn't have to stretch it. I didn't have to like rip it or anything. And we see that all the distances are still the same. We know that this is a rigid transformation. Okay. So this is checking geometrically, but we, if, you know, if checking these things geometrically is not sort of how you want to do this, you can also verify these things algebraically. So for instance, in this example, you can check this algebraically pretty easily, actually. So we just want to check that the distance between two points, let's say x1, y1, and the second point x2, y2, is the same distance as the transform version of them. Well, we know that the distance is just given by this equation we have here below. 1 minus x1 minus 1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus 3 minus y2 minus 3 squared. And we take the square root. In the first term, we see the 1's cancel. So we just get x2 minus x1 squared. In the second term, the negative 3's cancel. So we just get y1 minus y2 squared. And obviously, we have a square root over all this. And you might recognize this as the distance formula between these two points. And by this calculation, we immediately know that this transformation T is a rigid transformation because it preserves length, it preserves distance. So now that we're starting to sort of get into this, I wanna give you guys at home a chance to really sort of try this yourself. Try to sort of take some function or transformation T and check. Does this thing preserve length? Is it a rigid transformation? And you can try to do this either algebraically or geometrically. So for instance, here are two transformations and I want you guys to sort of try at home and think about whether these are rigid transformations or not. So now's a great time to pause the video, put your thinking caps on and really try to sort of deal with these transformations. I'll give you guys a second. Hey, John. Yeah. But they've had a second to kind of uh, do that. What do you think about showing them? Um, I've got some technology here and maybe, uh, maybe we can, maybe we can show them how this uh, could look with some, some pre-made uh, problems here. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right. So I've got my screen ready to share. So if you'll um, take over share in here. So it's time for me to stop is what you're telling me. Yeah, I think if you hit the stop thing, then then I will start sharing screen here. Perfect. First, uh, the first transformation that you have there was um, the trans. You're going to transform x y to y x, which means mm -hmm. just reversing the uh, y and x values, right? And so I actually plotted on my on my uh, screen here the the equation y equals x. So to apply that transformation, we're just gonna we're just gonna take this uh, this polygon that I've got here. And I've got two points already showing, so we can kind of see uh, those guys. And we're gonna take that polygon and we're gonna reflect it across this line because that's that's effectively what we're doing, right? We're taking mm -hmm. all the values and we're gonna we're gonna make them equal the the x values. And the same thing for the x values, we're gonna make them equal the y values, right? We're just gonna switch them back and forth. So we're gonna take this and um, we're going to apply a transformation called a reflection. We're going to take this polygon, mm -hmm. reflect it over that line, okay? And you can see it's going to end up here, down here in this corner. It's kind mm -hmm. of cool, right? So yeah. we see the points. Now, I can probably kind of guess, but let's actually, let's actually show um, these points just to verify. So this point here was negative 4, 3. Mm -hmm. It is four, uh, three, negative four, right? So the x and y's values have been swapped, and the same thing for this one, right? I have negative one, three, right? For that x value is now 
three, negative one for that, uh, for that point. So mm -hmm. we did, in fact, apply that first one. And what do you notice, John? What do you notice about this, uh, this transformation here? Well, it looks like it's the same shape, same size. It looks like distances are all the same. For instance, the distance between sort of the top of this T. Mm -hmm. This is three units before and three units after. So and I preserve. also noticed that uh, this looks like sort of what would happen if you took, let's say, this thing on a transparency and you just flipped it over but kept that line y equals x on itself. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. We just reflected about that and y equals x. So this is this is perfect. Like we we did in fact preserve this. So I would argue that uh, transformation one is a rigid transformation. No, absolutely. It, it appears to sort of preserve length, preserve distance. What about transformation number two? So I've got another example. Okay. What do you got from here? All right. So in this particular one, we talked about transformation two was we're going to take. Uh, the points x, y, and we're going to transform them by saying that now x is going to map to 2x mm -hmm. and y is going to map to y. So we're not changing any of the y values. Mm -hmm. We're going to multiply every x value by 2. We're going to okay. multiply every x value by 2. So let's think about what multiplying all every x value by 2 is going to look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to grab um, I'm going to grab this other version. See what I've done here? I've taken um, my x values and I'm going to map them to 2x. I'm going to multiply mm -hmm. by 2. So I've named this, this list 2x and then I'm going to do the same thing with the y's. So it's just going to be y. So transform to y. So let's plop that on here and see what the picture looks like now, this red one uh, here. So originally... Okay, so I think it's pretty obvious to everyone that uh, this is definitely not the same shape. And it looks like some of these distances are a lot bigger than they were before. Like for instance, let's say the distance on the top of the eye, before it was three. Yep. But now after this transformation, it looks like it's six. It's six units, yep. Which means this thing definitely cannot be a rigid transformation because it's not preserving length. We only need to check one, right? Yeah, that's the nice check thing about one distance. As soon yeah. as we saw that difference, no longer rigid transformation. Yeah, absolutely. Totally awesome. Totally awesome. We could actually prove this algebraically. John, do you want to walk us through the solution? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let me know when my screen okay. is back up. You can start sharing. I'm ready. We're good to go. Okay. Back with me? Yep. Okay, perfect. So we just checked geometrically and you can see how it's very intuitive to sort of check whether these things are true or not, but you can also check algebraically using the distance formula. So for instance, the first example, we see it's a rigid transformation because actually when you write out the distance formula for the transform points, what we actually get is we just get the distance formula in a different order. For the second example, we know it's not a rigid transformation and we can check just by taking two points. And two points that I chose to take were point at the origin, zero, zero, and the point one, zero on the x-axis. So the distance between those is obviously one unit apart, but when you take the transformation, the distance between zero, zero, and two, zero, two, zero is what one, zero maps to, the distance is two. So these two are definitely not the same, so we know it's not a rigid transformation. Now, we've been talking a lot about things preserving length, but we haven't said anything about angles. And we've been looking at some examples of sort of transforming shapes using rigid transformations. And one thing I wanna ask you at home is, do you think that rigid transformations also preserve angles? So just take a second, and I want you to think about it. Pause the video. Come to some conclusion. Okay. Now that they've had a chance to pause that video and, and talk about this, I, I have kind of a thought on that. Okay. I think it makes some sense. I was watching all of those triangles and things, and it, it appeared that those angles were definitely uh, the same, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
but maybe there's something you can tell me uh, about that. Yeah, yeah, of course. So first of all, I want to say that you're absolutely right. These things do preserve angles, and we've already seen this empirically through a lot of the rigid transformations we've done. And this is a little bit more advanced, but I think it's important that we just touch on this briefly. One way that you can show this is just by taking a triangle. And first of all, we know that when we transform that triangle, it has all the same side lengths. If they have all the same side lengths, then we know they have the same angle measures too. And this is something called the law of cosines, which is a sort of advanced topic. But the main takeaway is that if a triangle has all side lengths the same, if two triangles have all side lengths the same as each other, we know that they have the same angle measures. And so this means that rigid transformations preserves angle measure. Okay. Now, cool. yeah, so this is sort of the so far so good. We've introduced what a rigid transformation is. We've done a couple examples. We've seen how length preserving length implies preserving angles. And just before we wrap up, I just want to touch on the sort of things that are coming next. Okay. So next time, we're going to try to start to really think more rigorously about the different types of rigid transformations. And I want you to, at home, think about what are the most basic types of rigid transformations that you can use and can you build any rigid transformation out of them? I think that's a really good question, John. So um, yeah, let's think about that uh, for next time. And then when we get back together, we'll, uh, we'll explore that topic and that very idea. All right? Perfect. So um, that was a whole lot of fun, John. That was a whole lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, certainly liked uh, being able to present this with you. So. Um, We'll get started on our next video here um, pretty soon. So I guess we'll see you next time. Yeah, see you next time.